So here we are, our site um, displays an encrypted hello world. Let's now try to turn that into a form where the user can decide what the message is going to be instead of simply hard coding hello world in there. So the first little baby step might be let's put the text inside of one of these things. And this is a text area is the name of the HTML tag. So a text area is just a large uh, place where you can type lots of text. So we want our message to be embedded in one of these things. That seems like a nice, quick thing we can do to get started trying to turn our page into the assignment. So if we want our message to be inside of a text area element, we simply need to add that content to the string that we're going to return. So the simplest place to put that is right here. I'm just going to do that. <clears throat> I'm going to wrap this message up between two text area tags. And now, voila, there it is. Notice that, yeah, our ours um, starts off really small and like theirs, so that's just a CSS style, so we can fix that later. The next thing I want to do is let's get started with the real part of the matter, which is we want a button, we want the user to be able to type something in here and then a button, a submit button, that is going to send a message back to our site and then our site will be able to redisplay the page with the encrypted version of the message the user sent. So. The key ingredient we need to add here is a form, an HTML form. So let's do that now. In fact, we can see if we go and look at the answer version, everything in here is wrapped up in this form element. So there's a text area in here and then an input button in a break in between them, but we want to do exactly what they did here is to wrap this text area inside of a form because a form element is the main way you'll use to provide a vehicle by which the user has the opportunity to enter their own input and send that data over to the code running on the back end of your site. So let's go ahead and do exactly what they do here. We're going to wrap our text area in a, inside of a form, and we're going to also add a submit button. Here's my text area, and I'm going to pull this out and just store it in a variable and do a sanity, a sanity check, that's still good. Then, let's now make that form. So, first, actually, I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to make another variable called form, which is simply a form with the text area content inside of it. If I can spell, and then we're going to return that form. Well, not return, we're going to write that form to our response. So everything looks the same now, but notice that this is inside of a form, which is exactly what we want. And then let's additionally add a button, so a submit button. 
just call that submit. And actually the tag here, instead of a, it's not a button, it's a input. Uh, whose type is submit. This is how you create a sub a button that when is when it is clicked causes the form to be submitted. So I'll talk about this more in a sec, but let's just confirm that the button appears on the page. And actually, of course, I forgot one crucial thing, which is to use this new variable I made. So now we have both of these things inside of our form. Let's see if that does the trick. There it is. So notice when I click this button, watch what happens. The page refreshes. See that? And that's because um, our input has this special type attribute. The value for this type attribute is a special value called submit. And what that does is it creates a button that causes the form to be submitted. And that's still not a great explanation, so I'm going to go into more depth in a second. Uh, but first, let's just add one little additional thing, which is that uh, it's annoying me how this is on the same line instead of being underneath. So notice what they do is they add a little uh, break tag. So let's do that. Two. Okay. Oops, this one. So now we have something very similar to the version on the Udacity site. So let's go ahead and commit these changes again and wrap up this little video. And in the next video, I'll talk more in depth about some of that stuff. Um, so here we are. Only these two files have changed. Remember I said in the last, in the uh, fortune cookie assignment that you guys are going to get this. We have this main.pyc file. This is the compiled sort of artifact of our source code. Don't want you to worry about this right now. Um, in the real world, you would probably configure your Git repository to permanently ignore this file, and in fact, any file with this extension so that you don't have to see these and care about them. Uh, that's probably the correct thing to do, but I don't want to give you an additional Git thing to worry about because you already have plenty of Git things to worry about. So for the duration of this course, just go ahead and commit this file. Add both, and then I'm going to say um, wrap uh, text uh, wrap encrypted message in a text area inside of a form. Cool. So in the next video, I'm going to do a better job of um, explaining what exactly a form does and what it means to submit a form and how we can use that to further our project so that instead of just showing this thing over and over again, and notice how no matter, no matter what I do here, we just end up with this same hello with six O's. It doesn't matter what I said, because we're not actually currently, we don't have any code that is able to respond to what the user typed. We're just blindly using this as our message every single time. So in the next video, I'm going to talk more about forms and submitting forms, and then we're going to use that knowledge to actually respond to the user's input from the form.